complete and detailed system to become profitable traders. Melissa graduated magna cum laude from Gettysburg College with a BA in philosophy uh, and a minor in Latin and political science in 1994. She <laughs> was employed by several banks and brokers in Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, and New York as a mortgage broker for 17 years. She changed careers from banking to pursue a security trading career in 2008. A self-taught day trader with over 10 years experience, Melissa especially is trading strategy that focuses on shorting stocks that gap up. Melissa also appears frequently on TV as a stock market expert. Watch Melissa on RT America, uh, Cheddar TV, CBS, Fox News, and uh, Fox Business News. Uh, all right, uh, Melissa, you have the floor. You have until five minutes before the hour, and uh, I'll hand out my next batch of prizes. So I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. You have the floor. Wonderful. If anyone chats a question, will I see it in that little webinar chat box? Yes, you will. Oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. What an exciting day. It is Fed Day, and I'm talking right as they are going to announce what they're going to do. So everyone's been waiting, 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 waiting to see if the Fed is going to lower rates at all, quarter, a half. What are they going to say about December? Of course, we're less than 50 days away from an election. Hard to believe, but this is an event. Hey, Melissa, yeah. sorry to interrupt. It's it was okay. a half point. Oh, it was a half a point. Woo. Yeah. Obviously, the economy is much worse than anybody imagined possible. Are we falling or are we rallying? And stocks are rocketing. Higher. We're now up 300 points on the day. Gold is up 33 cents. Tesla's up $5. So that is, after all the waiting, that's what we got. Well, he's going to come out and talk in the next half an hour, and he'll probably talk and take questions. So even if we're up right now, it may not hold. Because if they did do a half a point cut, which John just said they did, my, my thoughts are that he could give some indication that they're concerned about the economy. They're concerned about a possibility of a recession going into 2025. But again, the market built in all year, all of 2024, that the market would actually cut five times this year. This was the first cut we did the whole year of 2024, and here we are, we're in September. So even though we're up right now, I wouldn't trade this. If you're here, just listen and watch because this could flip, could 100% turn around, could totally reverse in the next 30 minutes, the next uh, an hour. But again, he ended up doing a half, so it'll be interesting to see where we go. Like I was saying, I think this is a very exciting time to trade. Why? Because we're getting a lot of volatility in the market. Volatility means you can make a lot of money trading if you know how to trade it, but you got to get the direction right. So today we're going to talk about gaps. That is what I trade. And we're going to talk about trading on the side of institutional money in gaps. So if you're interested in more information, I do appear on TV. I try to put all my TV clips on my YouTube channel. You can go there if you have questions. But anything today, you can email me at melissathestockswitch.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So I put the stats for the room. Again, these are day trades on margin. This is through the 10th. I didn't put in the last couple of days in here. For the year, year to date, 2024, from January through the 10th, we're up 650056 for the year with an average risk per trade of $3,000 per trade. These are trades on margin. What does that mean? It means I call the trades in the room live where I'm shorting a stock, say I'm shorting it at $20 and it's going to drop to $19. i am shorting the trade on margin, so you have to have a margin account to do all of these trades. But I call them in the room live. I have a live trading room. Then I have a newsletter. This is an options newsletter. We're up significantly more for the year in the options. Uh, why? Again, we've had a lot of big moves. We've had a lot of big movers. Many of the things that I trade, specifically options, have volume, big companies. And again, the options are a newsletter. This is not a room. It's I don't have an options room. I have a day trade room where I do trades on margin. I'm risking more of my options. So I'm up over 2.6 million. Again, this doesn't include the last week and a half in here for options. So all in all this year, we've had a great year. And what's very interesting is, again, there's been a lot of volatility this year, but a lot of the trades that I did, a lot of the trades that are on these stats, the winners and losers, actually most of the trades that we do are shorts. And we're going to talk about shorting. And I specifically like to short. In fact, you can pull up and look at it. We shorted snow this morning. Snow was the short and it worked. And again, 
I'm out of the snow. I don't know what it's doing right now. But it was a short, okay? And that was one we did actually a couple weeks ago too. But as I was saying, the U.S. election is less than two months away. So there could be lots and lots of things that affect the market. Today was a big day because of the Fed, but there's lots of economic reports out between now and then. And of course, what's going to happen on the election? Will we have a rally depending on who wins? Will the market fall? You know, if you were if you were trading in 2016, you remember the futures that at night were down huge, absolutely huge, and then totally flipped. And so, you know, you were going to get a lot of volatility and big moves, specifically that first week of November when we have the election. I think the, I think the election day is November 5th. But volatility equals profits if you know how to trade it. And again, so that's the most important thing. If you knew the stock was going to go up, you would go long. If you knew the stock was going to drop or fall, you would do what? You would short it. Nobody knows what's going to happen until it does it. But I do see the gap in the pre-market. So my system looks at the pre-market, looks at the gap, and then goes through a rating system. It's a checklist where I determine then based on the gap that I'm seeing early in the morning, or you can look at it at night, gaps happen in the post-market too, they happen in the evening, and then I determine if I'm going to take a trade in it, and if so, in what direction. So a lot of people come to me and they're trading, they want to quit their job, they want to do this on the side, they want to make some extra money but really, I decided I wanted to trade for a, my full-time job. But it's really a part-time hours as a full-time income because I basically focus only on the morning, the first half hour, hour of the day. So how can you earn a living trading? Number one, you need a winning strategy. Number two, you need a supportive mentor. I try to be that for people. I'm actually doing a live class in New York City, not an online class, but I'm doing a live class this weekend where people are going to get to meet me. They're going to get to meet other traders. I, and people are going to get to see that I'm real and, and what we're doing is real. So that's very exciting. It's the first on uh, real uh, live class that I've done. Every, all the other courses have been online. But I try to be a support system for people to learn. And I also think it's very important to become an expert in one thing. So for me specifically, I have focused on nothing but gaps since I started trading. And then I gravitated very early on to focusing on shorts. Why? Because when a stock falls, just think about it. Again, I talked about the snow today. When a stock falls, it falls very, very fast. Panic comes in. Panic, panic, panic. And again, that's why stocks tend to move faster to the downside than they do to the upside. Not that stocks can't rally, but they fall faster than they rally. That is always the case and will also always be the case that a lot of people prefer to go long than they do short. It's just the mentality of most retail traders that they get the idea of buying low and selling high. But if you learn how to short, it's actually a niche. And I found that ever since I began trading in 2008. But when I look at a trade, I'm taking risk based on calculated risk. It's not risk for risk sake, okay? So I put the odds in my favor when I take a trade. I say, I wanna take this trade because it rates per my system high. Otherwise, I don't wanna do it. I don't wanna do it or I don't wanna do any trades at all. Because every time you take a trade, there's a possibility that you could lose. So again, you can't look at trading like it's gambling. You have to look at it like you're putting the odds in your favor. And so how do I do that? I rate it. I rate it using a checklist. It's a 26 point checklist. This helps me stay consistent for what I'm doing every day. <laughs> you know, a lot of people go long and short the same stock on the same day or even the market. I don't do that. So I either look at something and I say, this is a short, or I look at something and I say, this is a long, okay? Again, I don't flip flop. So again, every day I'm looking for the same thing. Whereas a lot of people are doing futures, they're doing uh, Bitcoin, they're doing options, they're doing all kinds of different things and they really, really never become an expert in one thing. They never really get good at one thing. I only trade gaps. I'm mostly short, sometimes I go long, but I'm mostly short and I only, only do gaps. That's it, that's the only thing that I do. So one of the cornerstones to everlasting trading success, to be honest with you, I found not just from teaching people as long as I've been, but just myself trading is the consistency. And then when you have to take a trade and if the trade loses, if you take a stop, you're not so worked up about it because you know that, you know, 70 some percent of your trades are gonna work. So that the next, you know, 10 trades or whatever are gonna be winners. So you don't, you don't risk the farm kind of, you don't get into that gambling mentality, which so many traders really can get in their head about. Without this, it's so hard, though, to stay in the market for any length of time. It's the consistency and the strategy that I use and the consistency in my risk. In order to be a consistent, a person needs proper focus on what counts. And for me, 
I focus on stocks that are being moved or controlled by institutional money. So that's what I'm looking for. And how do I determine that? I rate the gap. So really, you can get gaps all the time. Again, the market's going to gap tomorrow. Where it gaps, I don't know. Because again, we haven't closed yet. We got two hours left or a little bit less than that. But we could we could be up tomorrow big. We could be down. You know, who knows? It's too soon to say. But we will get a gap in the market tomorrow and Thursday after this Fed reaction. So gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. And some gaps are nothing gaps. And some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Again, could be up or down. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. And that is how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you. So this is a chart. Again, this was from last week, actually a couple of days ago. But what do I mean by institutional money? Now, if you were trading, this was the week of Labor Day. I was going to go back. This was Monday was Labor Day. The market was closed. This was Tuesday after the Labor Day holiday. We had a sell off that week, actually, in the market. So this is the SPY. So what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. So the SPY closed here the Friday before Labor Day, closed at one price, gap down, opened at another price, fell, sold off. We did puts in the market here. You could have shorted the market. You could have bought puts. A put is a short. Then we fell. So we were a little bit above 560, 561 and change, fell all the way down. This is into September 6. We fell 20 plus points. So it was a really nice week to capture this sell off, to capture this move to the downside, which again, based on the price of the market, it's cheaper to buy puts in the market in the SPY right now than it is to do day trades. But the market sold off that week. Okay, there were a lot of different reasons. Again, the market's been very nervous about today, not just about what the Fed was going to do about rates, but really what Fed chairman's going to say. OK, so institutional money is watching closely, 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 and will be on his statements today. And then, of course, the election, like I said. So becoming a successful trader and investor requires becoming a specialist in defining where the institutions are buying or selling a stock. Learning advanced technical analysis is required. What does this mean? It means reading price action and charts. So I'm looking at a chart. I'm using technical analysis. That's how I'm rating the gap. That's how I'm making the decisions if I want to go long something or short it. So comprehending how to redefine and train with this power will have a huge positive impact on your profitability as a trader. Elevate yourself, your trading, and your profits to a higher level of consistency and success by learning how to read the footprints of institutions trading in the market. Because it's a lot easier to make money if you're in a stock, and again, say you shorted it at $100, and then some big hedge fund or whatever dumps it, you're going to make money and it's going to have a big move and you don't even have to do anything at all. You just get out. So again, seeing where that's going to flow after the open, after 930, I don't trade in the pre-market, but I'm looking at the gap in the pre-market. Again, that is something very, very specific. And again, this is a niche that I can see the gap in the pre-market to determine if it's going to fall or if it's going to rally. Now, here was that same week, the week that I was talking about, we shorted a video, we did puts. This was a really nice trade. I bought the 110 puts that expired on the 6th. They were cheap. Okay, we'll look at the chart in a minute here. The cost was $1.70, sold at 625. It was a 268% return on investment trade, and I didn't even hold it the whole week. This stock almost came all the way down to $100 that week. I was well out before the 6th because it was the last day. If you took seven contracts and risked 1190, you could have made over $3,100. So let's look at the trade. So this was the NVIDIA of the day. So what did it do? It gapped down. Stock close here, gapped down, open, fell off a planet. So I thought this was a good exit right in here, but I want to show you this really went. This was probably like, uh, it was definitely over 400% if you held it the last day. It's a crazy, crazy sell off. This was Labor Day week NVIDIA. <laughs> and again, you know, this is a dump. You had an institutional sell off here on that day on the 3rd. And then it continued and it fell all week. <laughs> so when I do an option, I'm playing the momentum. I'm buying the put and selling it to get out or buying the call and selling it to get out. I was talking about snow. We shorted snow today. We did a day traded snow. We did puts in snow back on the 22nd. Uh, this cost 350 for one. Okay. It was 100% return investment. This was a nice trade. 
Whatever you risk, you could have doubled your money. Let's look at the snow 120s that was on the 22nd. So here's the chart. Again, this fell today. This was dropping today. We did it. Stock closed here, gap down, open, rallied, fell. So this closed up here the night before around 135 and change, gap down here in the morning around 121 and something. And we bought the puts and we also did a day trade in this. We shorted it and it fell. So again, institutional money didn't want with the snow. They dumped it boom, and it fell and they dumped it today because it fell this morning too. In fact, you could have done a swing trade in this, which I didn't do. I like to do options, but you could have done a swing trade in this as well. So when you think about it, it totally makes sense if you're going with the institutional money because they're the ones that move stocks. They're the ones that can move stocks in a big, big way. And again, when you're looking at taking a trade or doing a trade, you have to get momentum on your side. You got to get the direction right, but you also have to have a big move. Otherwise, you're taking all of this risk in something to make 10 cents, 5 cents, 20 cents. I don't trade penny stocks. I don't trade low float stocks. I'm trading stocks that have lots of volume. Again, if you look at the stats, companies that you know, BA, Mu, all of the things that you know you're familiar with the companies are real companies and they have lots of volume. You will get filled in day trades. You will get filled in options. You, you, they're being traded and played by hedge funds, big, big professional traders, banks that have trading desks. And that's what I find interesting about the market. <laughs> Again, the SPY made brand new all-time highs. It was before today, before this Fed announcement. But when you look at some of the banks, the banks don't look so good. Yes, some of the banks are in uptrends, but to be honest with you, like JPM had a big sell-off a couple of days ago. Some of these banks just don't look good at all. And, and it's really hard to like, wrap your head around saying, well, how is this market going to sustain itself and continue up and make new highs without the financials? So again, it's very tricky right now with interest rates and the election and so many things on the line where people don't have 100% conviction what they should do with their money long term. And people are up. If they've gone long, if they're in their money in their retirement account or long term investments, the market's been bullish all year, people are up. And then people get scared and they want to get out and they want to take profits and they don't know what to do. And then people are dumping stuff that's not moving with the market. You know, like the snow, for example. BA is another one that we've shorted and made money. And again, institutional money has been dumping these stocks. Mew too. That was another one we did. So if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, you can take the position in the right direction and then get out after the move happens for profit. But you have to understand how to trade with a side of power and you need to know how to find it. So knowing how to read what institutional money looks like is essential to becoming a successful trader. And you can win big trading on this side of power. You know, again, we were talking about the Fed. So like, this is why I'm not going to do anything this afternoon. I'm letting this all process itself go through. I'm waiting for tomorrow, waiting for the gap. So what if we gap up tomorrow? Doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to go long the market. It could sell off. It could sell off. I could short. What if the market gaps down? I don't know. Maybe I'll short. Maybe I'll go long. I don't know. So again, you have to rate the gap. It's not always as simple as taking it in the direction of the gap or reversing it. People think you trade gaps as gap fills. That does not work consistently to make money. Again, nothing is always black and white, black and white, black and white. People just want to look at moving averages or Fibonacci's or different indicators and say, well, if this crisscrosses right here and there, then it's going to work. No, it's not that way. It's complex. It's complicated. Again, I didn't know if the Fed would do a quarter or a half today. I thought they would do a half just for political reasons. But again, either way, the market could end up reversing this. It could be tomorrow, could be today, could be Monday. Because the fact is that they really should, probably should not have done a half. The data doesn't warrant it. And they did it anyways. And I think it was a political decision going into the election. But when you look at the data, and I talked about this on Fox News, I was on Fox Labor Day. The data is constantly, 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 constantly getting revised, more so than I've ever seen in any type of environment. And I've never seen this type of environment where interest rates have affected the market as much as they have. Of course, we had a very steady interest rate, low interest rate environment for a long, 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 long time. You know, and the market did what it did, but it didn't have these types of reactions. Again, volatility is your friend if you know how to trade it. But for the people that just want to go long and don't know how to short and don't know how to do that, you're missing out on lots of moves and lots of profits, specifically when the market and stocks sell off, you know? And, and again, I like shorting more than going long, even though we will go long. I like shorting because of the fact that we get fast moves with the shorts. We did go long Oracle. We did calls on Oracle. That was a nice trade. We went long Oracle. That was last week. Anyways, this is, again, chart of the market before today, before we flew up. 
then again, when you look at everything, you say, <coughs> well, let me read this. Let me see what he's saying. Let me, let me do a deep dive into the data. You know, you can have all kinds of opinions. You could flip the channel on Bloomberg, Fox Business Today, uh, 10 other channels, CNBC, and you could get a million different, uh, you know, opinions from different experts. You know, no one really knows what's going to say, and you don't even know even what the move's going to happen until it does it. So that's why I like playing the gap, because once the gap is there, boom, it's done. So if you wait for that gap, let it do it, which will be tomorrow morning in the pre-market before 930. Again, there's no gap right now here. This is just the market's trading. So you wait for the gap, see the gap. You have plenty of time in the morning if you get up early, which I do, to go through the process, go through the checklist and rate the whole thing. And then you can determine what you want to do because you can have all the opinions in the world and it may not flush out white. And that's why I look at what's happening in the chart, what's happening in the technicals, what's happening in the price action, because the price action is very, very important to tell you what to do. You want to see strength if you're going long. If you're if you're shorting, you want to see weakness. OK, any questions here so far? Take a sip of water as I'm going along. If we have time at the end, I'll pull my charts up and look at what's happening. <laughs> so a big flow of money going in a certain direction. It's what moves the market, stocks, and creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of power in a stock. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. And that's why it's so valuable to learn and understand where that money is. And again, whether you go long or short, it can help you even for the reverse. If you're in a position to say, oh my God, I got to get out of this. I'm long, it's selling off, I better dump my long, or whatever the case may be, okay? <clears throat> so it's good for both reasons, taking trains in or looking at long-term investments for the reversal. But in order to become successful in the market, you have to become a specialist. Get really, really, really good at one thing. It's like, we just had the US Open here in New York. You know, people that are great tennis players are not great football players and baseball players. and you know, you, you, you like in a sport, you know, you, you specialize in that. You want to become a doctor, you have to have a specialty. Like, you know, if you're a heart surgeon, you're not a heart surgeon, a brain surgeon, you know, and a liver transplant surgeon. You know, it's, it's very specialized. Trading is the same thing. It's very specialized. Well, there's billions and billions of dollars in the market and everybody wants a piece of it. I get it. Even, and this is the caveat of trading, why people get sucked to and they say, oh my God, I can make all this money. But the fact is, if you don't know what to do, you'll lose. So that's the caveat. It's just like if you, if you were a doctor and you didn't know how to perform heart surgery in someone, you wouldn't do it. Okay? So you have to become a specialist. It's the only way to really make any money at all. Otherwise, you're losing. So you're either doing it and you're doing well or you're just losing or you're breaking even and getting nowhere, which a lot of people do. They take a trade, they're up a little, then they kill it, and then they're down a little and they kill it, and they never get anywhere at all because they're too afraid to lose because they don't have a conviction of what they're doing, and as soon as they're up, they get out quick and they never get the big trade, you know? Um, someone's asking me, uh, thanks for being there. I'm curious if you watch the standard daily charts or also view higher and low intervals. <laughs> um, I just look at it daily. I don't know what you mean by higher and low intervals. Every single daily chart from 9.30 till 4 has a high and a low. Once the day closes, same thing if you looked at a one minute, a two minute, a five minute, every single bar of every 60 seconds in a one minute has a high and a low in the bar. I don't know if that answers your question. I don't know what you mean by the high and the low. But on the daily, it's where I find the gap. And again, you don't know the high or the low till the day closes, basically. Like you wouldn't know that today. And you won't till four, till after four. A specialist in one specific strategy is really what you got to focus on. And again, you're focusing on the power of money in the market. This is what brings momentum, opportunity. And every trader on every level must learn the skill set. It can be acquired through education. There's lots of people who are good at, like you are here. You're good at something. I don't know what you do, what your career is, what you're up to. Maybe you don't even work. Maybe you're a, you're a housewife, maybe, you, maybe you're retired, whatever. You're good at something, okay? Maybe you're good at making lasagna. You're a great Italian cook or something like that. Maybe you're a loving uh, dad. You know, you're a really good dad. 
you know, maybe you're uh, good at cleaning. You, your house is spick and span, beautiful. Maybe you're good at having parties. Maybe you're an accountant. You're really good with numbers. Maybe you're a doctor. Maybe you're an attorney. Maybe, maybe you're good, a good golfer. Everyone has skills and everyone is good at something. Like I'm sure you can say one thing you're good at. If you can't say one thing you're good at, then you really, your self-confidence is in the toilet and you really need to, to, to turn that around. But I'm sure everyone could say one thing they're good at. It could be professional, it could be personal, it could be just whatever. Okay, like I said, it could be cooking. When you start to train, <laughs> the whole goal of training, yes, it's to make money. That's the goal. That's what you want. That's the result. I get it. But if you make your goal being actually becoming good at it, okay, if that's your goal, two plus the money, then you're going to get there. And so I think a lot of times what happens with people is they start to trade, they lose money, their confidence goes down, and then they start to think they can't get good at it. It's impossible. They can't do it. They're never going to get there. How can they do it? Blah, blah, blah. Again, go back to the thing that you do in your life right now that I just mentioned, one thing that you're good at. It's not impossible to get good at something. And if you are good at anything that I just mentioned, you probably weren't born, you know, being a great attorney. <laughs> you know, you probably weren't born being a good accountant. You probably weren't born cooking a fabulous lasagna. So you learned over time. And that's the importance of education. And I think it's where a lot of people miss the boat with trading. And they just don't understand the importance of education because it's going to save you a lot of money in the long haul, you know. And a lot of times people go and they want to do free things <laughs> or go to free chat rooms. You can lose more money in a free chat room taking ideas from complete and total strangers than you can paying for a class. So don't do it. You know, you don't you don't know why these people are calling trades or doing trades. And they may even have suspicious reasons for calling trades like that where you don't even understand what's going on. So you got to get good, you got to get the education, and you have to focus really on one thing. So I put in here one week of trades in the room. This was an average week. This wasn't a huge week. It was just an average week. It was a week before the Labor Day. And again, these were all day trades on margin. 8.26, we did BA. I'm going to go over all these trades. My average risk was 3,000 a trade. The Qs were break even for me. It was profitable, but I didn't get out right. I did two trades on Amazon. That worked. I did full locker. It was a short. No trades on Thursday. And then Dell... I took one stop and then we did Dell again. It was big trade. So this was an average risk of $3,000 per trade, made $27,900 for this week, and we're going to go over it. So every single day we did it and it was a gap. So A26, here was the BA. Stock close here, gap down. We shorted this. We got in, got out, we were done. Boom. Again, shorted it at 173, got out 50 cents later, made 1150, and I was done. This was not an earnings gap, okay? Yes. And snow wasn't an earnings gap today. I told you we did the snow. If I have time, I'll bring that up. Then I, this trade was up. I actually didn't get out. It was up like a dollar plus. I just screwed this up because I was messing around with that Amazon. I shorted this as a day trade, but you could have bought a put at 473.30 and I got out break even luckily because it flipped, but it, I was up. I just didn't get out because I did two Amazons. I, this was a better gap, but it closed here. Gap down fell. This was the same day on the 27th shorted it, tried to make a dollar, got it down, made $25.50, then I did it again. I scalped it, did it again then, and made $2,700. So it was really, my focus was on Amazon that day. It was the same day that we did it. And then Foot Locker was a big one on the 28th. Yeah, this was here. Stock close here, gap down, open, rallied, dropped, shorted it at $29.95, got out at $28.65. This was a good trade. A dollar plus, again, you will take the shares that you're going to take based on your risk per trade. Your risk is based on the difference between the entry and the stop, which I call in the room plus the exit. This is a trade on margin. Now, if you don't have a margin account, you would buy a put. You could buy a put in Foot Locker, okay? And then you would sell it to get out. Now, Foot Locker kept going. I just want to show you here. Foot Locker actually kept going that same week and then kept going all the way down. I didn't look at it this morning. Then I got up this morning. Then on the 29th, didn't do anything. No gaps rated for my system at all. Again, I'm focusing on quality. Friday, we did Dell. Dell was so hard. Dell's up today. You could have gone long Dell today. In fact, if the market's up right now, Dell probably is up even more. <laughs> this was tough, though. Dell closed here, gapped up. We went long it, took the stop, got back in the Dell, added to the Dell, and then got the push right up here the run up into lunch on the friday which is not my preference to do a trade this late but it did work and the dell was up today dell was up today you could have gone long dell today as a day trade i didn't do it 
which you could have done that and you probably could do calls on that again because it finally looks like it's trying to get going around. Dell actually was a good gap, but again, the market struggled the week after this for the week of the after the Labor Day holiday. So when the market's against you, it's hard. If the, if the market's against you, it's tough to get anything overnight, specifically in options or swing trades. But again, people love to buy dips. That was rough for people in the month of August. It was rough for people in, or even July when we started to sell off. It was rough for people then the week of Labor Day. You have to look for specific, specific, specific setups and trades. Again, I don't trade the market all the time. Sometimes, but not every day, and certainly not every week. So this was an average week for us because we didn't trade one day, we had one loss. But again, good win ratio here, 27,900 profits for that week. Any questions here so far as I'm going along? Cynthia had a question. Do you have any other questions? I list a beginner and advanced trader category. Can I define this? Um, the risk is the difference for that as far as how long to go from getting to advance as far as your training. There is no set time because obviously you will make that determination if you're doing well and you're getting it. So I just got done saying I'm doing a live class in New York City this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and half day Sunday. There are some people that are brand, brand new. And then some people that have already done the class before online that are coming to meet me and do the class again and get the full in-person effect, but they they need more training. So it's, it's like, again, if you're somebody, it could just click for you. You could do the class in one weekend, poof, you run off and you could start risking an advanced risk on Monday after the class. Some people, again, you have to have an account to withstand that amount of risk. You have to be able to take the risk of the 3,000 per trade in the room. But if, you, if you're somebody that is, maybe it just takes longer to learn or understand stuff, then that's fine. That's totally, totally fine. Then you will start out with a small risk. You might even want to do smaller risks than I'm showing. Maybe you want to risk one contract. Maybe you only want to risk $300 or $200 or $500 a trade. That's fine too. You will know when you're ready to take it to the next level when when you are not making any mistakes with your sizing or your entries or your exits, when you are profitable for, I'd say, at least a month um, of four weeks in a row when you're following me and doing well. So there was one girl in the room. She's been with me now a year. She, When she first started trading, she never traded in her life. She's a housewife. Her husband wanted her to do it. She did it. She did the class. And she was on a demo like for the first three months. She just wasn't ready to go live, wasn't ready to do it never took a trade before and did the class and didn't know anything about anything. And so she was on a demo for the first three months. Then she started trading, then she started beginner risk, and now she's been with me, it'll be a year in November. And she's doing well, she makes money, and she listens to me in the room. But, so it's, it's really, you will make the determination, and of course you can ask me what I think. But I think you will know. You're like, oh, I'm doing well. I can start to risk more. It's not like you're gonna go from, you know, zero to a thousand in a millisecond. You will, Give yourself some time to prove to yourself that you can do it and you're profitable. You know, especially if you're starting out with a small account because you, you that's the money that you have and you need to chunk it out. I say chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. There's nothing wrong with starting slow and growing it. Nothing, nothing at all. And if I went back in time and could, if I, there was anything I could do over again when I started trading in 2008. I started trading with live money. I never traded on a demo. And if I could go back in time, what I would have done is not risk as much at the beginning when I started. So, and when I look back at when I first started out, and of course I didn't know what I was doing, you know, I, I, I wish that I had risked less money when I started because I didn't know what I was doing. Of course, I didn't take a class like mine, you know, but even still, I don't think there's anything wrong with starting small and growing an account over time. You know, you have all, the market's not going anywhere. You have all the time in the world to trade and make money. It's just adding a couple zeros to get to the next point. So I say start out slow, a week, two, three, a month, and then step it up. Earnings season begins the second week of October. The week of Columbus Day week, that's when the banks start. That's when earnings season starts. That's, I mean, literally, that's like, we're talking three weeks away from the election then. It's going to be crazy. It's earnings season, fall trading, busy time, election. Again, this is, you know, the week of the 14th, that's a good time to trade. You know, you want to do well and take all the opportunities when that's happening. So say you start now, if you would start trading with me now, I'd go slow and you would have, you know, two, three weeks to ramp it up until the busy season starts October 14th. That would, that would be my suggestion. Go slow and then get ready to go and then go full throttle then once earnings season begins that week. 
That was a good question. Anyways, again, I like to short because of the fact that I love trades that go fast. Now, how are you going to pick which gap? How are you going to find it? Again, there's plenty of places to find gaps. There's, there's no shortage. You could just turn on the TV in the morning and find gaps. That's not, that's not hard. It's qualifying the gaps and figuring out the direction. Again, what is a gap? A uh, stock gap from the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. So again, gaps follow and spot institutional money. That's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to find the best, best gap that I can every single day, whether it's long or short, but I do prefer the downside. And again, how do you find them? Because I rate them and I use a checklist and I do it in the pre-market in the morning. This is what you'll come and learn from me if you take my class. You learn how to find the best one. You learn the rating system. That's the meat and potatoes of what I'm doing. Then you can decide on your own if you want to do it as an option or a day trade. I like to do both, but I don't always do the same. <laughs> so I might, like today we shorted snow. I didn't do another option in snow. I didn't want to do that going into the Fed day. But again, we did do an option in snow on the day that we did it back in August. So gaps are a secret ingredient in charts that many people overlook, and yet they hold a lot of significance so much, they're just so important. And people don't understand how important they are. People just wanna lean into indicators because it's so easy for them to look at an indicator. That indicator is not gonna tell you everything you need to know. Maybe it's one piece of 300 pieces of information. If it was that easy to look at an indicator and make a determination or shorter resistance and buy and support, no one would ever lose. It's just not enough information. If I could look at 126 things, I would to make a determination to make money. You know, I've never added anything since I've developed the system though in all the years I've done it. I've gotten better as far as reading the market. And again, as I'm appearing on television, making predictions about things with the market and the Fed, but I haven't added any points since I developed the system and figured it out. So gaps make the trend set the trend and continue the trend in stocks in the market. They set the trend because they're a definitive and demonstrative change and show a price in what is called an event. And that event is extremely important. Like we had an event today, the Fed, that will create a gap tomorrow. Again, I don't know what it will be. Gaps are a real show of the power of money. Gaps either continue the trend or in fact change the trend. If you follow the gap, you'll be following the power of money. And that's going to make it easier for you to trade. You know, if we had stocks, if everything was a penny stock or low float stocks are really cheap, how would we ever make any money? We'd have to take like 50,000 shares or something to make $1,000. It's ridiculous. We're lucky that we have stocks like Tesla and BA and things like that that have monster moves that we can take 500 shares or 1,000 shares or 10 contracts and get, a, get decent money. But there's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock and it's money and it's it's not a little bit of money, but a lot of money, actually, or what I call power money in the market. Power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power money people. And guess what? There's a lot of them in the market. And that's why it makes it fun to trade. The amazing thing is that as negative and traders and analysts talk about the power money people, they're the reason that one individual can be successful in the market. So you can do this by yourself at home. You don't have to come to New York and work in Wall Street. No, you don't. You do have to open up your own trading account. You do have to know what you're doing, but you can open up an account at a broker, an options account with $2,000, a margin account at a retail broker or a prop broker, and you can trade by yourself from home if you know what to do from anywhere in the world, actually. And lots and lots of people want to trade the U.S. stock market, people from all kinds of countries because of the volume in the market and the way the market moves. And there will always be gaps in the U.S. market because there will always be a close in the open. The market always closes at 4 and it always opens at 9.30 and is closed on the weekends. But again, the key to profits is power. Big money, power money. Again, volume. And it's all about reading the price action. Again, people want to do all kinds of things with fundamentals, but it's the chart reading. It's the precision in the chart reading that really helps you. So you got to have charts. you got to have live charts, okay? And you got to study them. I mean, one of the things when I started trading, I used to print charts out. I used to draw on them and look at everything and try to figure it out. And that's how I got into doing gaps in the first place. Again, I'm trading momentum. I'm momentum trading. So I might short a stock that's in an uptrend. I might go long a stock in a downtrend. I'm playing the gap when I'm seeing it. And I'm looking for the power of money to do it when I decide to take it. And no matter how much money you risk, whether it's a beginner or an advance or somewhere in between, it's a lot easier to press a button if you know what to look for than if you don't. Otherwise, you're a 50-50 crapshoot and you really don't have the conviction in anything at all. 
again, it's like, who would you say, who's going to win the election? Nobody knows. It's a 50-50 crapshoot. Again, the odds change on a daily basis with the polls. The polls change too. No one knows. And we're so far ahead to go where, where we are with the election. I mean, you, you, you wouldn't have conviction to do anything to put a dollar on that. Like, so again, six months ago, Biden was running against Trump. So you don't know. You need some level of odds in your favor to trade. You can't just, you know, throw money out the window, your hard earned money, not understanding what you're doing and why you're doing it. When I take a trade, I say, this is going to drop because of this, because of this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing. And that's the 26 points. And that's what I rate. It's not like I'm saying, well, I think it looks like it's going to fall. No, you know, I rated it. I'm seeing things in the chart. That is what's helping me to make the decision to do it. And that's what gives me the conviction to plop on $8,000 in an option or $3,000 in a day trade or more, if that's what you want to do. Uh, do I happen to know what my average winning percentage is over some good amount of time, years maybe? I don't know how long you've been following me, Cynthia. You can email me. I can send you the stats for the last couple of years. I do have videos on YouTube, I think, with stats for the last couple of years. If you want to go to YouTube and look back from uh, videos I did, PowerPoints and webinars. But if you want to email me at melissathestockswish.com, I can send you uh, prior year stats if you want to see them. Um, but I'm pretty consistent. It's pretty much, you know, I am just do the same thing year over year. And again, it, it's like one of these things where there are years where we have different types of cycles. Um, you know, 2020, obviously, was crazy with COVID. Lots of opportunity from that February, March period and that massive sell-off we had, you know? And then 2021 was crazy bullish, like so bullish it didn't even make any sense, to be honest with you. Um, so again, this year has been bullish. We've had different periods of sell-offs, but if you look at where we are since the beginning of the year, you know, we're obviously up for the year. Will we close this way by the end of the year? I don't know. Again, I normally in an election cycle, I would say the market doesn't have that big of a move. We're sort of like back and forth medium, not really going anywhere in a range. But this year, I think it's going to be different. I think the stakes are higher. I think there's a lot more going on. I think it's interest rates, the feds, there's, there's two wars going on that we're involved with overseas. So there's just, there's so many things weighing on this market that could make it crash that I don't think anyone should bet the farm on that we keep making new highs every second. And a lot of this is also going to have to do, like I said, with earnings season, because how does what moves the market? Stocks. So if we have bad earnings, bad earnings, bad earnings, and Apple and NVIDIA and Tesla, I don't know if we will, then the market is not going to continue making new highs. Or if we have some fabulous earnings and then blow them out, Microsoft, Meta, some of these big movers, Netflix too, then we could have some really, really big, you know, follow through continuation moves to the upside, at least before the election. But you can email me at Melissa at the stock. Swish.com, Cynthia, I'll write it in here. Any other questions? That was a good question. Um, and obviously, if you're trading over time, you should want to increase your risk over time. You know, slowly, slowly, slowly is good, but that's the whole point. You obviously want to get better. You want to have more wins. You want to be able to risk more. That's the whole point of doing this. You want to get somewhere with it. I think a lot of people get frustrated over the years when they're trading and they're not getting anywhere with it. But be honest with yourself. If you're not getting anywhere with it, then stop what you're doing and do something else. Do something different. Learn a different strategy. If you don't have a strategy at all, that's problem number one. You know, and a lot of times people's attitude isn't right there. And that's an easy fix. I think the strategy is an easy fix. You just have to do something different. But trading is one of these nice jobs that you can do from home. And again, the system that I teach tells you how, what, and when. I'm looking for 20 points. Not a perfect score. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Trying to get as high of a score as I can. So how do you make money in the market? Trade a strategy and system that is profitable. Golden gaps are highly profitable. And again, that's why I'm trying to hone them down. One trade a day, maybe two. But you know, most of the, well, mostly I'm doing one thing a day. Like today we did snow. That's it. That's all that we did. We did it. We got in. It worked. We were done. That's it. That also helps you stay the course, add the size. You don't have to go look at a million different things, okay? When do we trade them? Early in the open and when they set up and trigger. And you must have a structure in place in order to make money. And again, whether you do day trades or options is totally up to you. But it's the idea of the focus on one thing. Just again, it's like if you were throwing a dart at a board, you're not going to hit a bullseye 50 times in a row. You hit a bullseye once, that's it. Boom, you're done. Shut it down. Go for a walk in Central Park. And that's really my attitude with trading. 
But anyways, it's a 26 point checklist. This is what you'll learn from me. And it measures gaps by rating them on the daily chart. I'm looking for stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, if I can get it. Big move in the day, again, if I can get it. Early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10. If I don't get that, I'm not doing it. And the precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. And again, I'm always, always trying to get a good risk to reward if I can get it. Obviously, if you take 1,000 shares and it drops $2, you take 500 shares and it drops $2, you know, the size is a difference, but again, a $2 move, a dollar move, those are big moves in stocks. Many people are up, like I said, a couple of pennies and they get out because they're so scared of it going against them. I mean, then, then how do you cover your losses? Because you will have losses. Any system has losses. Nothing is 100%. And anyone that tells you that, that's not reality. Okay. So that's why I also use stops. The stop is like the insurance. It protects me. So I'm not going to lose any more than I risk. Okay. So you put a plan of action in place. If you want to do this, you will learn my system, do the class, learn the rating system, try to get the best entry you can. Again, one to three hour goal and then create a money management plan for yourself. Set, set your goals. It's, you know, September. All right. So we have three and a half months left, not even half of September to go. So I'm going to risk this much money between now and January 1st. My goal is to make this much money trading between now and January 1st. I think that's a good plan. That's, you know, be realistic and then evaluate at the end of the year, see where you're at, and then you can say, well, I'm doing really well. And you can start then to up your risk in January of 2025. You have to be like, plan everything out, be very professional, take it seriously like it's a business because it really is. So some people are good at kind of overseeing themselves. Some people are not good at that. But that's why, again, I can be mentors for people. If you ask me, I will tell you what I think. If you ask me, I'm not like hovering over you, standing over your desk every day saying, do this, do that. But I call the trades in the room. It's up to you to take them. It's up to you to get out. It's up to you to size yourself right. But having a supportive mentor really helps. The room helps people because I'm calling the trades live. If you have a question, you can always call me after the class. That's important too. But if you come and decide you want to learn from me, it's a 26-point checklist I go through every morning. And I rate the gaps to determine what I want to do. When you decide you want to do this is an independent activity. And a lot of people, you know, they get bit by the market bug. They want to train. But it's you really have to be very entrepreneurial if you want to do this. You're basically working for yourself and you're empowering yourself to learn it and do it with the right information. But you have to have a foundation, a system, a strategy that you follow every day that will lead you down the right path so that you can take quality trades, good trades, trades that you would want to risk $3,000 on or $8,000 over a night in an option. So it's all the pieces of the puzzle that I teach in the class. The entries, the exits, the targets, the support, the resistance, the 26 points. And my class is called the Golden Gap. So again, I normally do an online class. The next online class is October. It is a full course in how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks in our professional bearish gaps. Uh, the class is October 19th and 20th online, 9 to 5 Eastern Time, Saturday and Sunday. And the trends course is 2 to the 22nd. The combo, a special I'm doing right now through Friday, is $7,999. The classes are online. The fall special I'm doing Friday is the first day of fall. It includes the trading room free for one year, the options newsletter free for one year, and the um, mark report free for one year and this is going on through friday the 20th you would be signing up for the october class so again the classes are online if this is something that you want to do you can always email me if you have questions and anybody have anything else they want to say ask me talk about i can try to bring the market up here really quick can you see the market oh we're not going anywhere whoa look at that Whoa, we're not really going anywhere. Whoa. Has he started talking yet? Let's look at NVIDIA. Let's get everything big. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? So we just talked about it. So again, the market was expecting, I think, what we got. So as of right now, we're nowheresville. And I have to tell you, that's probably not good. So my guess is he's talking and, and he'll go through the questions or whatever. So it'll be really interesting to see where we are tomorrow morning then. Because at this point now, we got what we expected. We should have been up more, I think. He may or may not be starting to talk. But I thought he was supposed to be scheduled to talk at 2.30. So 
we'll see where we are by four, but we're no Roosevelt right now with the market, which I gotta be honest with you, is kind of surprising, but at the same time, the market has been thinking all year with no rate cuts at all, that rates were gonna get cut, and we finally got it. But the fact that we're basically no Roosevelt is not bullish to me, even though we're green. I mean, you could say that we're green, but looks like we popped up here and we're up at 478.78. Let's see where we at in the spot. And it looks like we were at 568.69. So we really haven't gone anywhere. So I don't know. Like, I wouldn't be surprised at this point here if we close like this and tomorrow we ended up selling off. I don't know. This is not exactly what you want to see if you were long. And again, I said, sit tight, wait, see what happens here. An hour, 10 minutes left to go. But this is not like what I would call a big reaction to what the market has been pretty much anticipating and waiting for all year, which was rate cuts. Like we finally got cut. We got a cut. We had no cuts the whole year. And they just did a half a point cut and the market's nowhere. So that's kind of actually really interesting. Any questions from anyone about anything at all? Anybody want me to look at anything while I have the charts up? Any questions about anything? Cynthia was asking questions. I don't know if she has any other questions or anybody else. GDX, okay. Oops, let me pull it up. Do, 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 do. Um, this looks like it did something this morning. Uh, this gapped up this morning. This had a crazy move up. Um, I don't know if he, if he was talking about, again, I don't know what he's saying right now. I'm guessing he's talking and something that he said affected this. This is an ETF. So it's not like I, I, I typically gravitate towards trading stocks. Like I will trade the QQQs, the diamonds occasionally in the SPY, but I probably wouldn't trade something like this because it's an ETF. But that's just my my two cents. I don't really, like I'm not like, oh my God, this is fabulous, go long it. I mean, it's up, but there's, there that's like, there's there's better things to go long if that's what you're asking me. Like that's my two cents. Like there's a lot, lot more, bullish things to do basically this is up 80 cents it looks like from the move at two you know what i mean this isn't like like uh actually you know what we should look at let's look at netflix netflix and again i didn't want to do this into the i didn't want to do this into today but the last couple of days i didn't i didn't do it i didn't want, i didn't want to do this into today because I, I didn't know what we we're going to do today but Netflix is, if you had, if I had one, here's a takeaway today. Here's a stock switch tip of the day. This stock is strong. Of all the things that I've looked at, and I've looked at a million things in the last two weeks, this refuses, refuses to fall. This has earnings, and it's a big, big watch. This is one of the first earnings that are out. This is strong. This is probably one, if not the most strongest things in the market. This is stronger than NVIDIA. NVIDIA! This is stronger than NVIDIA, but I didn't go long it because it's expensive to do into the day today. But like, if you wanted to go long, this is a hell of a lot better than that thing that you just told me. Um, somebody else has a question. I'll look at GLD if you want. If someone's experienced and wants to use the system, would be setting up an initial account to trade this way. How much money would be a good amount to match the rooms trade to the beginning risk level? If you're talking about uh, trades on margin, if you go to a retail place, you have to open up an account with 25,000 at a retail broker. If you go prop, you can open up a prop account with 5,000 and get 10 one margin, that's 50,000. But you can't risk $3,000 a trade. If you wanna risk 1,000 a trade, I would probably have at least 10 grand in a prop account. If you're gonna go retail and you have an account for 25,000, it can't dip one penny under 25,000 or you're gonna have a margin call. So I'd put like 28,000 or 27,000. And if you want to risk a thousand a trade for that, then that's fine with that if you're talking about margin trades. Now, if you want to do, uh, what should we call it, options, the minimum to go off an options account is 2,000. There are no prop options places. Again, if you want to risk a thousand dollars a trade in an options account, I'd have the same thing. I'd have like a 10 grand at least in an account as a cushion. 
again, gold looks strong, but the reality is there's better things here to go long. Like, why do you want to do this? Like, there's, like, this would, I would fall asleep before I do this. Like, this is, like, fall asleep right here. Like, that's, like, a waste. Uh, FXC. Again, where are you people getting these things? This is no volume. These things are ridiculous. This has no volume. This is what we did today. I'll go over this really, really quickly. We shorted this. We got the drop, fell, boom, done, out. This had a move. Done, out, boom. And this does move. Don't do crappy things. Look at the volume in this, even compared to the things that you showed me. Please trade things that are good. Uh, ADMA? I don't even know what that is. I have no idea what this is. I've never traded this. Is this a new issue? No, it's not. 2014. I don't know what this is. I've never traded this. This is this is rallying. This is rallying. This is volume. I mean, I think it's too late. It's too late. If you're in this, uh, you know, it looks like it's going to 20. Like, if you're long this, fine. That's too late to do it now. But it's basically, it's this is this is better than anything that anybody said of the picks that things what people wanted me to look at. That looks good if you're in it. If you're not in it, I think it's too late here. You know. Anyways, thank you so much for having me. Be careful, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful fall wherever you are. If you're interested, email me at Melissa at the stockswish.com. And be very careful the next two days with this market.